today I'm going to show you how to make this whole cloth um, baby quilt that is like machine stitched together but then all the top stitching is going to be done by hand with embroidery floss. Um, this is a great beginner's quilt. Uh, I am by no means a quilting expert. I am very, very new to this, but I have found a couple of versions of quilting that just I enjoy. I'm not a perfectionist when it comes to quilting whatsoever, so I prefer to use like linens or linen and cotton blends because they just give you that like organic look and vibe and they also get kind of like that wrinkliness that I like out of it. So if you're into that, this is like a good, this is a great like really, really simple beginner quilt. I will probably screw things up and don't, cause like I said, I've not made like many quilts at all, but this is a really easy um, like baby receiving type of blanket to make. And that's what I'm making it for. I'm making it for my baby boy that's due here soon. Um, and then I made one for my sister who just had a baby as well. So like I said, for this quilt, I used 100% linen and then you'll need batting to go in between it, um, which I used a batting that has like a percent shrinkage on accident <laughs> that needed to be pre-washed. And it just gives you that extra crinkly look um, that you uh, you can see in like the finished um, quilt. This isn't finished yet. That is a way to get that crinkly look. Otherwise you can get something that has less or doesn't have shrinkage and is pre-washed for batting. Um, and then you won't get as crinkly of a look, but linen like of its nature is going to give you kind of that crinkle look, but it'll be more exaggerated with a batting that needs to be pre-washed that you don't pre-wash before using like I did. <laughs> so it was a happy accident. Pins. I like pins that have glass heads. You're gonna need some water soluble pencils for marking out your pattern. I chose to do a really cool scallop pattern, which I'll show you how to do. You can do a gazillion, like it's so open-ended. You can make this as colorful, as monochromatic, as busy, as simple as you want. It's a really, really forgiving, simple um, quilt to make. And then this is like part of the little how to make a scallop thing. So pencil and some kind of card stock paper thing. I like just a little embroidery um, scissors or any scissors. For this, I use a doll needle. I don't know if that's the right thing to use, but it's nice and long so you can get lots of stitches in. And the um, like thread opening is big enough for the embroidery floss that I use. This, I don't know if it's like the perfect I option for top stitching a quilt, but they come in so many colors. I like the kind of thickness of the embroidery uh, floss and it is really easy to find. For my quilt, I'm using the DMC 3787. You'll need lots of embroidery floss, maybe a thimble for your finger. That's pretty much it. And a sewing machine, you'll need a sewing machine. And now let's walk through all the steps for this quilt. Let's start by cutting out two square pieces of fabric. I fold mine in half and do a straight cut up one end, fold it into a triangle, follow that line, cutting it again, and then I'll cut the actual folded part to get a nice little square. This quilt is really forgiving, so I'm not super precise when I cut it, um, but it's roughly a 36 by 36 square quilt. Next, let's lay out our batting. The bedding that I picked on accident is this one, um, but it has shrinkage, which gives that crinkle like look that I was talking about. Over your top of batting, place your two square pieces of linen and just kind of smooth it all out and try and line up those two pieces of linen as closely as possible. I find it helpful to kind of pin in a few spots and then kind of smooth out my linen as much as I can. And it's nice to work on a big table surface like this. Once it's all smoothed out, pin in place. I just cut some excess around the batting and then I pinned it a lot more <laughs> all the way around the perimeter of it. So when laying your fabric out, you're going to have your good sides together of your linen and then those two will be set on top of the batting. Then trim away the excess batting around the fabric. Cutting out the rounded corners is pretty simple. I just use a bowl that I have 
<laughs> around my house and then just a regular pencil because this part of the fabric will be inside the quilt and you won't see it um, and just kind of sketch around the edge of your rounded bowl or plate or whatever you have and then you're just going to take your scissors and follow that line to get a nice rounded corner i just like the look of this you could do them square but i just think rounded corners are cute on baby quilts and then do it to all four corners now it's time to sew, but you're going to want to put two pins on the edge of your blanket. This is the hole we're going to leave so we can turn it inside out. I just find adding pins helpful when you're going around the machine, you know where to start and stop. So beginning at the one end of the pin, just put your foot down and do about a quarter of an inch um, seam allowance all the way around with a simple straight stitch. I actually went over the line that I already did a second time just to make sure it was all going to be very secure. Um, just make sure you start and stop at that opening. And then I like to trim away any excess um, fabric that you have. It just makes it less bulky in that seam there. And then you'll also want to cut little cuts, not up to the actual stitch itself, and that will help make those rounded corners kind of lay flatter. And then the satisfying part is turning it all right side out. <laughs> then head over to your iron and you're going to iron down that fold or opening that we had um, so that you can uh, hand stitch this part closed. Then take some pins, this just helps to keep that opening in place while you hand stitch it closed. Before I hand stitched that opening close, I actually laid it out flat on the table and put a series of pins in it um, to keep the fabric in place because this is a whole cloth quilt. I spaced them out about a hand's width and put them all over the quilt itself, the pins. Then using a really simple slip stitch and a thread that matches my fabric, I just hand stitched that opening closed. This is the part where you're going to get creative and like what kind of pattern you want to do with your hand stitching. There's a, a like it's like an endless option. You could keep it super organic and just like eyeball it a bunch of lines and <clears throat> use a bunch of different colored embroidery floss. Um, I like embroidery floss for this because they just come in a variety of colors. Um, they are thicker and probably not ideal for like top stitching always or like maybe the most durable, but they're really readily available. I like the DMC ones. The cheaper ones are really cheap I find and just not really good. So if you can find the DMC ones, they're literally at like most. Um, craft stores. Sorry, I'm a little winded. I'm like 37 weeks pregnant. <laughs> or what I did for my sister's uh, baby blanket was I actually did a scallop pattern. And how I did that was I took this is a um, painting stick. Or you can use like a piece of cardboard. Like a, a good one would be like a cereal box and cut a strip and do the same thing and just poke a hole in it with like a pen. So when I made this, I marked out my little things about an inch and a half apart, the little holes, and I did six holes in it um, to create the scallop pattern that you see in the finished product. And then just take your pen, stick it through, um, or like the tip of a, a scissors, and that'll create the little holes for you. And then you can use water-soluble um, marking pencils you can get these again at the craft store online. I'll link as much as I can um, below uh, for like Amazon. But this, they come in usually a couple different colors. I would use the blue on this because the white just won't show on the slider fabric. But if you had dark fabric, use the white one. Um, and how I did this was also these pins might kind of get in your way when you're putting your pattern down. But I find that it's okay. You can kind of get the gist of it in the pattern and it's better to have the fabric kind of stay put because you kind of have to really work some of these pens. The pins might get in your way when you're trying to kind of like write out your pattern or you know sketch out your pattern with this on the quilt but I think it's worth it. You can get enough of the pattern on the quilt with these um, pins in the way. It just helps to keep the linen stabilized because linen is really 
um, wiggly and not as like crisp and flat as cotton. Now let's take the cardboard strip with the holes in it that we just made and anchor it in the bottom corner with one of the water soluble pens, the color that you don't want to use, and then take the color that you do want to use and just put it through the first hole and kind of swing it back and forth like that to get the mark on the fabric. Sometimes it can take a little bit of work to kind of get the color to transfer onto the fabric. Um, these wipe off or like wash off really well, so don't worry too much about, you know, having like blue blue on a light colored fabric like that. In the first wash, it all comes off. Once you've done all of your scallop marks, we will move on to the next. Uh, I go from right to left. So just take your um, cardboard cutout again and start at the very bottom of the last scallop mark. Anchor it there and repeat the same thing. You just want to draw your line to the top of the last scallop so you know that you stop there. make a full roll of scallops and then you're going to move to the second line of scallops and the place to start is where the two scallops kind of meet here. You'll place your cardboard template there, anchor it again with the little water soluble pen and just draw your lines until you meet the top of the ones that you've already drawn. Pretty simple um, and you'll just move along doing that to the whole quilt until you have all of your markings drawn out. So after you've drawn out your whole pattern, I chose to do scallops. <laughs> I couldn't decide on like a linear pattern, so I just went with what was easy. And I love the look of how my sisters turned out. So I'm doing scallops, but I'm doing a different embroidery floss color. I'm using kind of like a gray green color, which I think is going to be really pretty. Um, I recommend, like I mentioned, putting the uh, finishing edge simple straight stitch all the way around the blanket and then drawing out your pattern that way you just get like the right spacing I guess so now um, all you're gonna do is just start like hand embroidering your heart out until you do the whole thing so you can start with like just like an arm's length of embroidery floss if you want um, I tend to just do like two because it goes longer or like if you have more to do, you can keep going for a while longer. And then I have my doll needle that I just got at Join. I use like the medium size one. These are kind of like thick needles, but they work for this embroidery floss just fine for me. So we're going to thread it into your needle head. And then I'll show you how to do something called a rocket knot at the end. And then we'll pull that knot through the fabric so it gets hidden in here. This is like the, it sounds like kind of crazy, but it's really, really simple. So let me do kind of a close up for you. All right, so here's my doll needle. It's fairly thick. I've threaded it through a little bit. And then now we're gonna do something called the rocket knot that I learned. 
So you go all the way to the end of your embroidery floss and you make like a little T like this. And then you're gonna take this part and you're just gonna wrap it around, not crazy tight. I do it about four times. So after wrapping it around the three to four times, you're just gonna kind of shimmy it. It usually gets a little stuck here, like the eye of the needle where it's going over the widest part. So just go slow and try, that's why I say don't wrap it too tight. I may have wrapped it just a little too tight. All right, so once you get it past there, you're just going to drag that still all wrapped up. It's kind of nice to put your fingers through the rest of the loop. So as it comes up, it can get kind of tangled. And keep going. And then you'll take your little fingers out and you'll pull it all the way. So then you're left with like a big chunky knot. And this is what we want so that we can pop it through the fabric and hide our knots on the inside of the quilt. And it doesn't really matter how long your tail is. If you ended up with like a really long tail, we'll trim it, not a big deal. So then I'll show you how to start a stitch. So personally, I like to start in like the bottom right corner. That's just because I'm right-handed and it's easier for me. Um, but what you wanna do is just start by your first line. That's because I'm doing the scallop pattern. So if you're doing that, otherwise you can just start in any linear spot. But um, instead of starting right at your line, you actually wanna kinda like go in from the side and pop your needle up where you wanna start. But you're only going through the top of the linen here and it's not coming through the bottom at all. It's okay if you get into kind of the batting on the inside, but you don't want to go to the outs, the back side of the linen because we're gonna kind of hide this knot. So pull it through. And linen's really forgiving with this um, knot thing that I'll show you. Um, and we're just gonna pop it through the linen. So I started my stitch way out here, but then came up at the beginning of the line that I drew for my pattern. And then what I like to do is just grab like the top bit of linen or like your fabric. And then you're just gonna kind of pull at the other end until your little knot pops through. And sometimes if you get into that batting, it can make it a little sticky, but that's good because then the knot will kind of stay in there. And don't worry too much about like the little hole that gets left. Once you wash it, it'll kind of all fall back together. And so you'll see that none of that thread came up on the other side. It's just right here, ready to go. And if you had a really long tail, uh, mine was kind of short, you would just take and trim the little tail and then just kind of stick it inside there. And then you just start like hand stitching. This comes definitely with like practice and you'll get used to it more, but what I do is I try to do kind of like long, medium to long grain pieces of rice. <laughs> when I stitch, as you can kind of see, I try to keep it consistent, but the whole like beauty to me of these handmade like top stitch quilts is they aren't consistent like that's not perfectly straight and they're they're just they're handmade and i love it um, but i would recommend keeping your stitches kind of short not doing like a really long stitch that's like that long because it just runs the risk of getting caught on something so you can do one at a time as you get more used to the embroidery. Um, what I wouldn't recommend is going like down through and trying to pull it through and then line it up on the top side. You just don't get a very consistent result. So instead go all the way through like this and then kind of poke it back through on your line. And this may seem like it's gonna be like really tedious at first, which I mean, it kind of is, but 
But as you get to some of these like longer stretches or lines, um, especially if you have like a linear pattern, you can do multiples. So you kind of weave it through, up, down, and that's where having like this long doll needle really helps. Like this. And then you've done three stitches at once. So it'll like pick up pace as you get more used to it. And then when I come to the end, I am going to jump over here now to go to the rest of my pattern. So I'll just go down just through the top layer of linen and I'm gonna come up just through the top layer of linen over here. So I went down through this layer of linen on this row and I'm coming up through this next one. And you'll see that I made this big jump from here, but there's not a big line of embroidery floss back here. And then you just keep going that direction on your next line of whatever pattern you made. So this would be true too if you just did like lines spaced apart this far, or maybe you're doing lots of little lines for a really like colorful kind of cantha looking um, quilt. And then sometimes when you're working with stuff and like I'm now going the other direction but I'm right-handed, you can actually like rotate the whole thing around. So it's nice if you're working on like a big table like your dining table or something like that and uh, can just kind of keep the quilt flat and then able to go the same direction as your Used to. And I like to have my hand kind of on the back, like guiding the needle a bit. It just works well for me. And that's why we pin the whole thing so that you can kind of pop your hand underneath it as you get to the middle um, and know that the fabric themselves isn't shifting, shifting. So here's the same thing again to go up to this line in my pattern. I just go through the top layer, not into the back at all, so you're not gonna see it. And then I poke my little needle head at the beginning of where I wanna start my stitch for my next line in my pattern. And you wanna keep the like um, tension in your embroidery floss, but you don't want it to be like really, you don't want it to like pucker like that. And usually you can just go kind of space it out if it gets a little too tight and you don't also want it too loose. So finding that like nice little tension that keeps the fabric flat and gives you the look that you're going for. All right, you can see our scallop pattern is coming to life, which is I think so pretty. Um, but now let's say you're running out of thread, which I'd probably do a few more stitches, but just for the purpose of this, I'll show you. But you wanna make sure you leave yourself enough thread to do this. So when you get to the end where you wanna tie off your thread, you're just gonna take your needle and you're just gonna wrap it around about two or three times. Leave yourself enough kind of length to make one more stitch, kind of. Pinch that little knot, wrap that we made, and pull your needle through. This is hard to do on camera. And then you'll end up with like a little not at the end. That one was not my best work, but <laughs> you'll get the point here. And then just go through that front face again and then kind of come out a ways away from where you're putting it in. And we will just pull that knot through. Kind of rub it into the batting in there. And then you just kind of want to Gather some of that fabric down. Trim your little floss, flatten it out. And now you have your knot 
hidden on the inside. So we'll thread our needle again and doing that same rocket knot at the beginning. But to start this one, what you wanna do is actually go in from the side again. But we're gonna come up right at the back of our last stitch here. So if you had started like right here and pulled up and just did another stitch, you'd like kind of miss a stitch in the back because the thread is obviously going through both sides. Um, so you'll have a couple spots where you'll double up the stitch, but that's just to keep the pattern um, going and you don't have like funny gaps. So if you get to this part, this is where we're gonna pull it through. Another option is to kind of like loosen the fabric a little bit with your needle where you wanna pull it through. Just kind of poking it, massaging that fabric to help it kind of go through a little easier. And then, like I said, I hold it and I just pull it through. And then I have a little tail there, so I'll pull a little back, cut it, and bury it. And then to stitch this, just go right back down that same little size that you made. You can't even really tell, and then you'll just continue hand stitching all the way across. And you'll repeat that for the whole quilt now. So that really like makes up the whole gist of this quilt. There's no, it's just like nothing super fancy or I find too intimidating about this type of quilting. Um, the hardest part is probably just going to be learning to like thread your needle and make that knot and then pull it through. But outside of that, it's very repetitive and pretty therapeutic to me. I like to just watch a show or like a series and then kind of do this as I watch kind of a series that doesn't take a lot of like <laughs> brain power to watch. Um, and just stitch and stitch and stitch until it's done. I think this... When I did my sister's, um, I think it took me maybe like two or three evenings of like watching shows for a little while, um, probably a couple hours or something like that. Um, and I was able to like hand stitch the whole thing. So I feel like this is like a pretty digestible quilt. You can get it done in like a week if you kind of block out some hours in the evening, maybe when your kids go to bed like mine or Maybe you don't have kids yet and this is your first baby and you've got time. This is a very like chill meditative thing that I find really enjoyable. Like as I lead up to my birth too, just like putting on some like really calming, like chill music, sitting at my table, looking out the window and just kind of like hand stitching. So I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial on how to make this whole cloth linen like hand stitched quilt. It's like I said, I think pretty easy and I am a total beginner at this. So if you guys make something like this yourself, I would absolutely love it if you tag me on Instagram so I can see it. It's at Kitty Cotton. And I can't wait to see what you guys make. And I'm excited to finish this and by the time maybe I'm finished with this, my baby will be here. <laughs> it's a great little nesting activity. All right, I'm just going to stitch away until my kid comes home and my husband with some coffee and have a nice little Sunday. <laughs> All right, thanks for watching, bye. Oh, I almost forgot to mention here. When you wash this quilt, I would recommend like either hand washing it, but I'm gonna be real, like I have a kid and I'm not gonna hand wash this all the time, if very often. <laughs> so what I would recommend and what I did with my sisters and it turned out just fine is like a larger garment bag. Throw it in the garment bag, put it on like a delicate or hand wash cycle in your washer and then lay it flat to dry or like hang it to dry somewhere. I popped mine into the, after it had most, like pretty much dried, I popped it into the dryer just, I, it gets a little some of the wrinkles out and kind of softens the linen afterwards. 
but I would put it in a garment bag, wash it in my washer on like hand wash, delicate cycle, and then hang dry or um, yeah, I'd probably just like flat or hang dry as much as you can. And the fun thing about linen too that I love so much is the more you wash it, the softer it gets. Like this is brand, brand new linen. I actually didn't even wash this before I made this. <laughs> I did with my sisters, um, but I got lazy and didn't pre-wash my fabric. Oh well. Um, it gets softer and softer by the like washes and I love that about linen so much. All right, well, happy, happy quilting. <laughs>